Welcome, Calculus BC. This is lesson four five, area between curves. Let's begin. So before we've done definite integration, and when you do definite integration, it produces a value. It's like a number. And that number may be positive, negative, or zero. And it positive if it's above the x-axis, negative if it was below, and zero if it's just like there's it's like on the x-axis. However, sometimes I actually I want to want you to find the actual area of some, some part of the function. Maybe like an area between two curves. And when I ask for an area, it can't be negative. So think like make it the absolute value of what it is. So the formula for doing the area between region of two curves looks like this. So I have two curves, f and g, and maybe I, I'll have some uh, limits, like a lower and upper limit. And I wanna find the area between those two. I just integrate them from a to b and do the top minus the bottom one. Top minus the bottom, that gets you the area between two curves. F's on top, G's on bottom, integrate, subtract, there you go. All right, uh, this looks differently for functions if they're in terms of Y. Let's think of like sideways functions. So this is what we just learned right now, area for functions of X, with your normal ones you'll see most of the times, the top minus the bottom. However, in cases like this, it's the same area between two curves, but like the area is these are functions with respect to y now, so they're they're on the, just kind of tilt your head a little bit. And we're going from these limits right here, different y value limits, not x's. So in those cases, it's going to be the right curve minus the left curve. So in this case, if I re rewrite this integral right here, I'd go the integral from c to d of the right one, which is your f of y minus g of y, dy. Sometimes you have to do it that way, and it's just a similar formula and stuff you do. So right minus left. So here's an example. I want to find the area of a region bounded by these two functions, and then x equals 0 and x equals 1. Now I have the picture for it over here. And you can see, so this is my x equals 0, x equals 1. It's limited, it's between those two functions. And then I have my two functions here and here, and that shows my area. Well, first let's set up the integration. I know my limits are going to be from zero to one. It's kind of in mentioned right here and here. Now the question is which functions on top and on bottom? In this picture, I mean, you can probably figure it out, but let's say I couldn't figure it out and didn't know which one was on top and bottom. How would I figure this out? We'll just do a test value. So I'll pick some function on here, like I'm gonna take when x equals zero. So when x equals zero, this x squared plus two would equal two. And this y equals x would just be equal zero. This one's lower. So this is the function y equals x. And this is the fun function y equals x squared plus two. So I can say x squared plus two minus x dx. And you just gotta figure out what's on top and bottom, any test point. All right, so anti-derive, I get x cubed over three plus two x minus x squared over two from zero to one. Plug in the one first, I get one cubed over three, plus two times one, minus one squared over two, and minus zero plus zero plus zero, because just plug it in zero so they go away. So I have one third plus two minus one half. Now I wanna, okay, that's my answer kind of, but let's see if I wanna simplify this. I wanna get common denominator, so I'm gonna multiply, get everything to a denominator six, so I multiply this by two over two, this by six over six, and this by three over three. So what you get is two over six plus 12 over six minus three, six, 12, 14 minus three is 11, six. This is a fine answer. And yeah, there you go. There's my area between those two curves. Okay, so sometimes the I'm not told exactly what my boundaries are. So you have to kind of determine the boundaries. So let's take these two functions here. Two times square root of x and x squared over four. So I'm not told what my upper and lower limits are, but these functions are actually gonna intersect somewhere. And what you wanna do is you wanna set these, you must set up these equations to figure out those, where those limits, of, the points of intersection are, because they'll tell me my limits of integration. So what you wanna do, set them equal to each other. So without a calculator, in these cases, you can set them equal to each other. So I'm gonna say two times square root of x, because they're both y equals form, equals x squared over four. 
Let's solve for x. It's kind of gross, but the well, that was really gross. Okay, so what's the first thing I do? I don't like this four, so I'm gonna multiply by four on both sides. So I get eight square root of x is x squared. All right, I don't like having just an x squared. So I am going to square both sides. And what I'm going to get is 64 times x equals x to the fourth. And I'm actually gonna subtract 64. One of those things you just wanna get everything to one side. 64 minus 64 x. And let's, what can I factor out? Well, I can factor on x. So I'm left with x cubed minus 64. And then you're like, huh, well, I can factor this one. This is just x equals zero as a point of intersection. But what's the point of intersection over here? Like what value for x does that work? And x cubed minus 64 equals zero. And that answer is x equals four. Four cubed, 64. So I have my two points. There's my lower limit and there's my upper limit. And I'm gonna graph those. So when x equals zero and like, okay, zero and four, how do you know where to graph those? Well, just take one of your equations. I'm gonna take this equation, do x and y. x equals zero and four. When you plug in zero for x, it is zero for y in both cases. And when I plug in four for x, I get two times square root of four, which is two times two is four. Same thing over here, I would get four. So I'm gonna plot this circle here, four, and then zero, zero, and four, four. Now, which question's on top? So like, one of those, we can even call this equation a y1 and this is y2, which is on top. Like, and it's on top in this region. So we gotta pick some test value point. Let's pick, I don't know, x equals one. That might be easy. So if you pick x equals one, top equation right here, this is gonna be two times square root of one. So this one's gonna be um, y equals two. And this one would be y equals one squared over four, one fourth. So this one's on top. And it doesn't matter, just any one point in there, it won't flip in the middle, because it would if it fits flipped in the middle, it would have had more points of intersection. So this equation is actually gonna look like that. And that's y equals two square roots of x. And the other equation, x squared over four is actually gonna be this parabola shape doing this. Wow, that was a really good drawing. That's, wow. Wow. So this area I'm gonna shade in is right here. Take a screenshot. All right, so setting up my integration, I know I'm gonna go from zero to four. Actually, let's do the work down here. I'm gonna go from zero to four. And what's on the top? It's my two square root of x, and then minus x squared over four dx. This looks like it's gonna be so fun to do. Let's do it anyways. So two square root of x, the same thing as two times x to the one half power. So that's gonna be two times x to the three halves power times two thirds minus x to the third over three times four is 12 from zero to four, yay. So let's plug in four first. I get two times two or four times four to the three halves power over three minus four cubed over 12. And then plug in zero, it just goes, everything goes to zero. All right, so doing the math right there, four to the three halves power is eight. Four to the three halves is equivalent to the square root of four cubed. Four cubed is 64, so which is eight. So four times eight over three, minus 64 over 12. Hmm, 64 over 12, so this is gonna be 32 thirds. 64 over 12 actually reduces both of them by four, is 16 over three, and this happens to be 16 thirds is my answer. There you go, did one, that's pretty long. All right, so what if I wanted to do this with a calculator? So let's take these two functions here. I wanna find the total area of this region. Now, one thing going on here is it's split. You have one function that does this, 
and the other one that does this shape like this. Notice on the left hand side, one of the functions is on top, and then on the right hand side, a different function is on top. And then you have this issue where like, where do they actually intersect? Like this is probably zero, but what's this point and what is this point? I mean, is it two? It might not be with the calculator. It might look close like that, but I think they're just trying to trick you. So, and we have two functions here. So what I'm gonna do is use a calculator. Oops, drop the pen. All right, so let's do this calculator thing. So I'm gonna graph both functions. And I'm gonna go x cubed minus x squared. And then we're gonna go negative x squared plus 4.1x. All right, let's graph it. And I'm probably gonna need a zoom in, huh? So I'm gonna change my zoom. Let's go to standard. And I still wanna zoom in. This will be good practice. Okay, and I still can't see that bottom end. So I'm gonna just change my window size. I gotta have my X, Y minimum lower. I'm gonna go negative 15. And I definitely don't need my X's to go out so far. So I'm gonna go negative See from my picture, I'm gonna go negative four to positive four. That should give me an okay window. Let's graph that. Just based off of what I have in my picture. This might be something you would see on an AP test. Okay, this makes it a lot easier to figure out. I have an intersection there, there, and there. So first thing, I wanna figure out what the intersection point is right here. So I'm gonna go into uh, math and go to intersection five. And first and second curve, it doesn't matter. And then in TI-89s, I have to choose a lower and upper bound. So I'm going to go left of it and to the right of that point. And then I'm going to get my answer is negative two point something. What is that? I can't even see my curve. Oops, I just messed that up. Intersection. Long video. Only one. Oops, lower bound, I messed that up. Upper bound. Okay, so I have my first point of intersection. I'm gonna say this is x equals negative 2.025, round it up. Okay, let's do another point of intersection. Uh, first and second curve, just choose them. I'm gonna verify this is zero because it is zero. And now let's do the last one. Again, first and second curve. Lower bound doesn't matter. Upper bound, make sure you go to the right of that point of intersection. So this is zero. And this is at 2.025. All right, so see they weren't exactly at two and negative two. So that's why you gotta check. Now which function's on top? And, you know, especially if you graph, it was pretty easy to, to kind of tell. And, or maybe if you realize this is a cubic function. So this one is the x cubed minus x squared one. And this parabola shape is going to be the negative x squared plus 4.1 x problem. So there's two integrations here. There's the one on the left. And the one on the left is going to be from negative 2.025 to 0 of your cubic, your f function, so x cubed minus x squared minus the g function, negative x squared plus 4.1x. And that's gonna give you the area of this side. Now the other one is going to be an integral from zero to 2.025 of the opposite of that. So I'm gonna say negative x squared plus 4.1x minus x cubed minus x squared dx. Now let's practice actually putting that in a calculator. So I'm gonna integrate, actually let's do it like a TI, no, I'm gonna do it TI 89 way. So you're gonna integrate and those functions. Now I can be really fancy that since I typed those in as y1 and y2, so I'm gonna say y1, and you gotta do parentheses. Wait, y1's the one on top, yeah. X minus y2 x comma x comma your lower negative 
0 to 5, comma, upper 0, and close it off. And what do you get? My correct answer, I hope. This is 4.2025. Notice that the area is positive, and that's what it's supposed to be, because the area between two curves should always be positive. If you ever get a negative, you messed up somewhere. Now, we're going to do another integration. I'm going to integrate. Um, instead of y1, it's going to be y2. And then you don't do that parentheses x thing if you do on ti84. Wait, minus y1 x comma x comma 0 comma 2.025. And you enter that and you got an identical area. Sweet. So those actually mirrored each other? Huh. That's cool. This equals 4.2025. So my actual answer is just adding those two up. So 4.2025, which is 20 plus 4.203, it's going to equal 8.406. And that's my area between those two curves. All right. We are done. We're not doing that.